Hi everyone, my name is Anastasia. I'm a community engagement manager here at Bricklink. Today we're going to be talking about connections in Bricklink Studio. If you're just starting with Studio, we would recommend that you subscribe to our uh, Bricklink Basics series. You can see the link in the in the description. If you would like to see any further tutorials that we that we're going to do, make sure to follow us and uh, let us know if you would like us to talk about anything specific in the new tutorials that we're going to make. And of course, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat or in the comment section and we'll reply to them either in the end of the live stream today or um, after the live stream is over. So let's get started. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the Connect tool and any tools that are related to Connect tool that will help you streamline your work in Bricklink Studio. So we're going to mention uh, collisions and we're going to talk about the snapping tool and of course the camera controls. So let's get going. This is my, this is my project here that I, I have some parts already prepared here. And um, what we're going to look at first is um, the very first thing I always suggest is going to the settings, studio preferences and shortcuts. Here, it will allow you to select the controls um, that you would like. You can change them as you go. It's a good place to go to for reference as well to see what your options are as you get more and more proficient with Brickling Studio. So as you can see, I have my controls uh, to move parts left, right, forward, backwards. And then I have also the rotation tool set up here. It's not default settings. It's something that I picked for myself that I found out to work the best for me. So let's move on to the parts that I have here. I'm going to show you the, the easiest connection that we can do here, just basically stacking parts on top of each other. Did you notice when I'm moving the parts around, they become transparent. So the reason for that is because I have collision tool turned on. The reason for collision tool is just to demonstrate if parts are in the same, in the same space. It's going to show you that they are in the same space and indicate that for you. If I have it turned off, you can't really see that. You can't really see the transparency. So some of the tips that the designers use when they are using this tool is they actually build, build with a collision tool. Sorry. Okay. They build with a collision tool turned off like this. And once the build is complete, they turn it on and it would highlight any of the, any of the errors that they made along the way to just kind of highlight if anything, any errors were introduced while they were more working on the mock. So something else to, uh, to note here as we're talking about parts is the, um, when we're moving the elements, I can show you how they can be moved using our controls. As I showed you, I have the, let me highlight the part first. So as you can see, based on my camera location, the parts move differently. So as you can see, I'm using the W right now and the part is going up. If I'm using the S, the part is going down. But if I switch my camera angles, the part is gonna go in different directions. So that's an interesting uh, point to mention here because uh, camera controls are a really big thing to keep in mind when you're working, especially with the connect tool. So we'll be getting back to that as we move along. So, um, I showed you a bit of uh, a bit about the collision tool, and now we're going to move to the snapping tool. I have it turned on right now, so as you can see, if I hover over the part, the uh, the connection happens really easily and really quickly. I'm going to show you demonstrate with another part here, so you can see it it happens very easily. What if we went and uh, went ahead and used a more complicated part? Let's see what it's going to look like with a different part. I'm going to go into my part search. So let's use this Technic brick with a with a hole for for uh, for a Technic pin, and we're gonna get the Technic pin spin itself. I'm gonna assign them colors so it's more visible for everyone. Now we have the part itself. Uh, so. A few words about the rotation. I'm not going to be really able to connect them like this. I actually need to change the angle of the part. So uh, you have these arrows here that can give you like a more precise rotation here, but you can also choose to, I can undo this rotation now and you can do a more precise one. So this is uh, this is a 90 degree one. 
and I can snap the part to get parts together here. As you can see, I have the snap tool enabled. So what happens if I have it disabled here? Let's try to do the same thing again. You can see the collision is on, so you can kind of control it a little bit better. But without the snap tool, it's really not as easy as you would imagine as, as we did before. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well. Another thing while we're talking about this is the, let me, let me see, yeah, especially from this angle, it's kind of, it's really difficult to see that. Um, with camera control is one thing to keep in mind is uh, based on where the camera is, you move your movements are going to change so something that i uh, showed to you previously speaking of movements let me turn on the snap speaking of movements there is a way to move several parts at once to move them simultaneously so if we have one part selected to select another part you should click command and that way using our controls we could we could be moving the parts around this time it's moving up again if we change the camera angle the parts are going to be moving in a different direction. So there is also another thing to mention here about moving the parts around, and I'm going to demonstrate it um, with these uh, two by twos. So you can see this tool right here that's called grid. So right now it's at the the biggest one. So what, what happens here? Let's see from this angle. As you can see, it's moving in all directions. And uh, this time it's moving one stud every time. Let's go to the other one, to the medium one. And there are two options here. I'm going to start with this one. It's a plate option one. And it's better to demonstrate it from a different angle. So I have my plate right here. So what this does is it moves the part one plate up. So yeah, you can move it. You can snap it here. The other one that's not a plate is going to move uh, move our part once uh, half the stud here and then there's a fourth option here which is the fine one this is the smallest movement your part can make and actually the unit for this movement is one ldu which is eldro unit uh, and it's one stud to give you kind of like a reference one stud is 20 ldus so there's just something something a little, a little bit more about the movements that you can make okay Now let's move on to the connect tool itself. I'm gonna remove some of the extra parts that we were looking at. And we're gonna look at the longer parts right here. You can zoom out. So that's the connect tool right here. When I select it and I select the part, it's gonna show me all the different ways how this part will be connected. We'll start with this easy part now, and then we'll move on to more complex ones. So first thing to explain uh, the basics kind of here is that we have the stud and then we have the anti-stud and the studs connect with anti-studs. So what the first thing that we're going to do is to attempt to connect, uh, kind of switch the two parts between themselves. So I'm going to use the first select the stud and then I'm going to select the anti-stud in the other part. So as you can see, it was easily easy for us to make the parts switch. We're going to go backwards, which is command, command Z. And um, I'm going to show you the same, how, how Connect Tools works with other parts that are a little bit more complex. So let's go to some other parts here. So we're going to use a bar. I'm going to move it to the side so it doesn't, doesn't get in the way. And I'm going to use the claw part. So there's an, an interesting point to notice here. So I'm going to change the colors to, to make it easier. So if you want to connect the two parts right now, it's not going to even work. So we're going to check, okay, we have collisions on, we have snap on, but it's not really working, even though the snap tool is on. Uh, it's not really the same behavior as we, had, as we had here. It is because of the position of the bar. So one way we could change that is uh, to actually put the bar in the right position that we want it to be in, which is using this, and that way we can connect them easier. Um, there is another option. Um, Studio would actually rotate the part for you if you are um, if it's not in at the angle of ninety degrees. So I'm going to demonstrate it for you.
So uh, to get get a more refined rotation, you just click right here. You can switch the angle. So now we're going to try to connect the parts here. We're going to do the manual connect for now. Manual connect is not working for us. So let's try let's try to actually use the tool since we're demonstrating the tool anyways. So uh, let's turn on the connect and look at the different uh, different connection points that we have in each part. So you can see um, basically what Stu Studio doesn't really know which part I'm going to connect the claw part to. So it showed me all the options that 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 are here. Same with the bar. The bar part as well is giving me all the options. So if I'm using the bar part and I'm going to connect it to to the claw here, it's really it's really not as easy to do. So why, what I would recommend doing is starting with the with the part the claw part itself. And I'm going to explain in a minute why that that is not the preferable way to go. So I'm going to say we're going to put it in the middle, and it's going to remove the claw right here. And then we can just we can just use the rotation. We're gonna switch off the connect, and we're just gonna rotate the rotate the tool. We're gonna use both of them, and we're gonna do the rotation. Oop. So I'm going to explain a little bit. We're going to get stuck a little bit in the rotation here. So what I'm going to explain why um, not all the parts connect the same way that you would expect them to connect. So I'm going to unconnect the two parts here, and I'm going to probably switch to another claw right now because it's going to just to speed this up for us. So um, as you can see, the the bar itself is a solid part. Or while the claw actually has an empty spot right here, and this is where the connection happens. So it's generally not super, e not that easy to make this connection here. The connection point shows, but if your camera angle is ca uh, catching it in the mesh instead of catching the solid part of the part, that's that connection is just not going to happen. So um, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to I'm going to explain how we can do this with a different part, which is very similar to this. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna build a wheel, and we're gonna put a tire on it. Okay. So you have you have these two parts again. Something to be aware of here is the hollow part inside the wheel and then we have this uh, part that we're going to connect it to so we're going to change the angle here and we're going to make the connection i'm going to select assign the color So you can see again all the connection points are visible here for this part so we can select uh, which point do we want them to be connected and there's an option so see there's no hollowness here there's a there's a filled part of the part so that's why it was easy to connect so compare this to the claw situation that we had it's way easier to make this connection so uh if we undo this there is another way to do that as well and which is using just the top of the part so with parts like the the tire, the wheel, there's not really not that many connection points when you highlight the parts. So another way to do that would be just to select the top and connect it to the to the part right here. So let's try with the tire too. So the way for us to do the tire would be let's go some other route this time. We're gonna find compatible bricks here and we're gonna select a tire that we can put on the wheel. We go. So let's look at the connection points with this part. This is pretty interesting. 
you can see there is actually only just one connection point and it would take you a while to find out a good angle to figure out how you can make the connection so the best suggestion is just like we demonstrated before would actually just to use the the top here to make the connection Okay, let me uh, let me do the color. It just makes it easier. Okay, this is our point, and we can connect it here. And yeah, so that that's a bit, a bit of a preview how you work with uh, the parts that have big holes in them and how you can connect them. Basically, the tip is just to go at the at the top of the part and select the connection there. Let's look at some other parts here. So we just talked previously about studs and anti-studs. And uh, there is also hollow studs, and that's what we're going to be looking at next right here. Oop. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect, try to connect this part to this part right there. So the only difference, and it's an important point to show here, is um, how how do we make this connection uh, with uh, with the hollow studs because it, it acts slightly different than the studs that are filled out filled in. So an, a good way to do that. Let me remove this part. Is if you look at the bottom and you again see there are hollow parts right here. So changing the angle is a good way to go about it. Let's let's do that again. Let's try to do that. So, so you can see this. That's the pin part, and that's where the hollow stud can go. So let's select the pin and connect it to the hollow stud. As you can see, since it's hollow, it's not really working again for us. So, what we can do instead is that we change the angle. Took me a while, but it's just something that you kind of master while, as you move along, you, especially using hotkeys and everything. It's going to take you so much less time, and especially knowing, mastering the camera angles, mastering the uh, understanding which, how the parts connect, learning connections between different parts. These are just some of the examples which you could be using, and there's way more that you could do that you can do with the studio. I think that's that's it for now. That's just some of the basic things that uh, we wanted to demonstrate. If there are any any questions here, um, well, I would be able to read them out loud. No questions this time. Okay, if anyone has any questions, please use the, the co comments under the video itself and we'll be able to get back to them and reply to the questions afterwards. And uh, if you'd like to see any other tutorials coming up in the future, please let us know. We'll prepare another video for you. And please subscribe to our Bricklink Basics series. Thank you. See you next time.